Welcome to part two of our four-part series on diabetes. In this video, we are going to discuss type 1 diabetes, the symptoms, causes, diagnosis, testing, and everything else you need to know about this chronic disease. In case you missed it, please see the link in the description for part one about prediabetes. What are the symptoms of type 1 diabetes? Symptoms of type 1 diabetes often start off mild and worsen or become more acute over the course of many days, weeks, or months. This is because your pancreas produces less insulin with time. Type 1 diabetes symptoms include frequent urination, including full diapers and bedwetting in newborns and toddlers, excessive appetite, undiagnosed weight loss, fatigue, vision impairment, slow wound and cut healing, Candida vaginalis infections. If you or your child exhibit these symptoms, you must visit your healthcare practitioner immediately and request a type 1 diabetes test. The earlier a patient is diagnosed, the better. Untreated type 1 diabetes may be fatal if the diagnosis is delayed owing to a condition known as diabetic ketoacidosis. Seek immediate medical attention if you or your child exhibit any of the following symptoms. Fruit scented breath, sickness and vomiting, abdominal discomfort, rapid respiration, confusion, consciousness loss or drowsiness. Now that you know what to look out for, let us look at the why and how of type 1 diabetes. What are the causes of diabetes type 1? Diabetes type 1 occurs when the cells in the pancreas that are responsible for producing insulin are wrongly targeted and destroyed by the body's immune system. This damage may occur over the course of months or even years eventually leading to an insulin deficiency. Researchers are under the impression that there is a substantial hereditary component to type 1 diabetes, even though they do not yet know the actual etiology of the disease. If there is no history of the disease in your family, there is a 0.4% chance that you will acquire it. If your biological mother has type 1 diabetes, your chance of developing the condition ranges from 1% to 4%. If your biological father has the condition, your risk ranges from 3% to 8%. When both of a person's biological parents have diabetes type 1, that person's chances of having the ailment is increased to as high as 30%. Suppose you have a genetic propensity for developing type 1 diabetes. In that case, scientists think that certain events, such as a virus or chemicals in the environment, might prompt your immune system to target your cells in your pancreas, which can lead to the development of the disease. How is diabetes type 1 diagnosed? Diagnosing type 1 diabetes is quite straightforward. If you or your child exhibit type 1 diabetes symptoms, your doctor will request the following test. A blood glucose test. A blood glucose test is used by your healthcare professional to determine the quantity of sugar in your blood. They may request that you do a random test without fasting, as well as a fasting test which requires that you abstain from food and drink for at least eight hours prior to the test. If the test indicates an extremely high blood sugar level, it is often indicative of type 1 diabetes. Glycosylated hemoglobin test or the A1C test. This metric evaluates your three month average blood sugar levels. Antibody test. This blood test screens for autoantibodies to detect whether a patient has type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Autoantibodies are proteins that mistakenly target your body's tissue. The presence of certain autoantibodies indicate type 1 diabetes. Autoantibodies are often absent in people with type 2 diabetes. In addition, your healthcare practitioner will request the following test to evaluate your general health and determine whether you have diabetes-related ketoacidosis, a severe acute consequence of undiagnosed or untreated type 1 diabetes. Basic Metabolic Panel. This is a blood test that evaluates eight distinct chemicals in the bloodstream. The panel gives useful information on the chemical balance and metabolism of the body. Urinalysis. A urinalysis is a test that evaluates the visual, chemical, and microscopic characteristics of urine. Providers utilize it to evaluate a variety of urine characteristics. In the event of a type one diagnosis, they would request a test to detect ketones, which your body produces when it must break down fat for energy rather than glucose. A high concentration of ketones causes the blood to become acidic, which may be fatal. Arterial blood gas test. 
An arterial blood gas test measures the amounts of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood using a blood sample taken from an artery in your body. Fortunately, type 1 diabetes can be managed and treated. Which kind of physician manages type 1 diabetes? Patients with type 1 diabetes are treated by an endocrinologist, a medical professional who specializes in hormone-related disorders. Some endocrinologists specialize in diabetes. Visiting a pediatric endocrinologist is necessary if your child has type 1 diabetes. Routine visits to your endocrinologist are necessary to verify that your type 1 diabetes therapy is effective. The amount of insulin you require will fluctuate as you age, so regular checkups are vital. How is diabetes type 1 treated? Type 1 diabetics need synthetic insulin daily, numerous times a day, to maintain health. Additionally, they must attempt to keep their blood sugar levels within a safe range. Management of type 1 diabetes is difficult and highly customized due to the several variables that impact blood sugar levels. The following are the three primary components of type 1 diabetes management. Insulin. There are several varieties of synthetic insulin. They each begin working at various rates and remain in the body for varying amounts of time. You may need the application of many types. Some varieties of insulin cost more than others. Consult with your endocrinologist to determine the appropriate insulin for your requirements. Insulin may be administered in the following ways. Multiple daily injections. Insulin is administered by many daily injections using a vial and syringe. With each injection, the right amount of insulin is extracted from the vial using a syringe. Insulin may be injected into the fatty tissue of the abdomen, upper arm, thigh, or buttocks. Insulin pins. Typically, disposable pin needles are more practical than syringes. They are also a viable alternative for those with poor eyesight when taking measurements of insulin. Insulin pumps. Insulin pumps are devices that provide insulin on demand and constantly. They simulate the method in which your pancreas would normally produce insulin. Rapid-acting inhaled insulin. Similar to an asthma inhaler, this form of insulin is inhaled through the mouth. It is more effective than other forms of insulin. Monitoring blood glucose levels. Throughout the day, people with type 1 diabetes must regularly check their blood sugar levels. Maintaining a healthy blood sugar range is the most effective method for preventing health issues. The following methods may be used to check your blood sugar. A blood glucose meter. You prick your finger and place a little drop of blood on the test strip of the blood glucose meter. Your blood glucose level is shown on the meter in a matter of seconds. A blood glucose meter is often the least expensive choice for at-home testing. However, it only provides an immediate reading. Continuous glucose monitoring or CGMs. There are many types of continuous glucose monitoring test. Most CGMs need the insertion of a tiny sensor under the skin every seven to 14 days. Some CGMs are implanted by medical professionals. The sensor measures your blood glucose levels continually. Calculating carbohydrate content. Counting the carbohydrate content of the food and beverages you eat is a significant element of managing type 1 diabetes to provide the correct insulin dosages. Carbohydrates are a macronutrient food found in grains, sweets, legumes, and milk. Among other meals and beverages, your body converts carbohydrate-containing meals and beverages into glucose, which is its preferred source of energy. This increases your blood sugar. People with type 1 diabetes must consequently self-administer insulin when they ingest carbs. Basic carb counting entails counting the grams of carbohydrates in a meal by reading nutrition labels and matching that quantity to your insulin dosage. Does type 1 diabetes have a cure? There is no treatment for type 1 diabetes currently but scientists are working on strategies to prevent or reduce the growth of the disease. Scientists are also conducting research on pancreatic islet transplantation, an experimental therapy for individuals with brittle diabetes. Islets are clusters of insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system targets these cells. A pancreatic islet transplant replaces insulin-producing islets that have been lost. This surgery involves the transfer of islets from the pancreas of an organ donor to a person with type 1 diabetes. However, this research is still in its infancy. Can type 1 diabetes be prevented? 
Unfortunately, there is little that can be done to prevent type 1 diabetes. Your healthcare practitioner may screen your family members for the autoantibodies that cause type 1 diabetes, since the condition can run in families. Even in the absence of diabetic symptoms, the presence of autoantibodies increases the likelihood of developing type 1 diabetes. If a sibling, child, or parent in your family has type 1 diabetes, you should choose to have an autoantibody test. These tests may aid in the early detection of type 1 diabetes. Before we continue, just a reminder to hit the notification bell to get a notification for part three of our diabetes series. In part three, we will be discussing type two diabetes. A diagnosis of type one diabetes is a significant life event, but it does not always exclude a person from leading a fulfilled and healthy life. Diabetes type one always requires careful monitoring and control daily, even while it is possible that the first few days may be quite overwhelming. As time goes on, you will have a better understanding of how to handle the illness and how to stay in touch with your body. Be sure to have frequent appointments with your endocrinologist as well as any other healthcare specialist you visit. The management of type 1 diabetes is a collaborative effort. Thus, you will benefit from having support from medical experts, loved ones, and friends. If you find yourself in a position where you need assistance, do not hesitate to contact them. Be on the lookout for our penultimate episode coming soon. Thanks for watching.